It was one of the most defining encounters in human history, a meeting that reshaped not just our story, but our very bodies. Tens of thousands of years ago, as modern humans spread out of Africa, they stepped into lands already claimed by another people, not beasts, not myths, but humans of a different kind. They were Neanderthals. For more than 300,000 years, they thrived across Europe and Western Asia. They hunted the same animals you would recognize on the plains. They endured ice age winters that dropped far below zero. They shaped tools with a skill that rivaled ours. And when our ancestors met them, they didn't only fight or compete, they mixed. They had children together. That moment of contact left behind something astonishing, a trace that still lives on right now in your own DNA. Today, scientists can measure it with uncanny precision. Most people today carry between 1 and 4% Neanderthal DNA, especially those whose ancestors lived in Europe or Asia. That might sound small, but it is enough to change how your immune system reacts, enough to shape the texture of your hair, enough to influence your skin's ability to tan or burn under the summer sun. And yet, for nearly two centuries after the first Neanderthal bones were discovered in a German valley in 1856, the question remained haunting. What exactly did we inherit? What silent signatures did they carve into our biology? The answer began to emerge not in caves or museums, but inside the sealed vaults of genetics labs. In 2010, a team of researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, achieved what had once seemed impossible. They extracted fragments of DNA from Neanderthal bones found in Croatia's Vindija cave. The process was painstaking. Ancient DNA is fragile, degraded, often contaminated by soil and microbes. But after years of work, they stitched together the first draft of the Neanderthal genome. What they found was breathtaking. When compared to the DNA of living humans, certain sequences lined up perfectly, as if two voices from different ages were singing the same notes. It was proof that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals had interbred, that our bloodlines were not cleanly divided, but forever entangled, and the story did not end with that revelation. Once geneticists had the map, they began tracing its fingerprints across the globe, they found echoes of Neanderthal ancestry in people from Europe, from Asia, and even in Native American populations whose ancestors carried it across the land bridge into the Americas. But this was more than a curiosity. Those inherited fragments were not random. Some appear to have offered advantages, genes that may have strengthened the immune system against challenges in new environments. Others, researchers suggest, have been associated with certain modern health conditions, particularly those linked to metabolism or immunity. The bones of an extinct species had become a mirror for modern health. Every time researchers compared ancient sequences with living patients, new connections appeared. How easily you fight off the flu. How your skin reacts to ultraviolet light. How your blood clots after an injury. All of it. Traces of choices made by Neanderthals long before your ancestors ever set foot in Europe. But to truly grasp this legacy, scientists had to go deeper, to search for the precise signs, the visible, tangible clues that Neanderthal DNA is still walking beside you. They turned not only to genomes, but to traits, to the bodies of living people, to faces, voices, and behaviors that could be measured, cataloged, compared. And what they found may be written on your own body right now. Signs that you carry Neanderthal DNA are not hidden in distant archives. They are in your nose, in your hair, in the way you sleep. They are subtle but undeniable, and they tell a story that stretches across tens of thousands of years. So, how can you tell if Neanderthals are still alive in you? Let's find out. Start with the shape of your face. Neanderthals carried broad noses, built not for beauty, but survival. In the Ice Age, a wide nasal cavity helped warm the freezing air before it reached the lungs. If your nose is unusually wide, or the bridge sits just a little flatter than average, you may be looking at their signature. And it doesn't stop there. Studies show Neanderthal DNA influences the shape of the skull itself. A slightly elongated skull, a subtle bulge at the back of the head. 
tiny echoes of a lineage that vanished 40,000 years ago. Then there's your skin and hair. Certain Neanderthal genes helped adapt to Europe's weaker sunlight. They altered melanin production, changing how skin tans or how it burns. They affected keratin, the protein that makes hair thick or coarse. Even freckles, once thought of as a quirk, may trace back to them. If your skin burns easily or your hair has a rugged texture, you could be carrying traits forged in Ice Age winters. Move lower into your body's defenses. When scientists searched immune system genes, they found entire segments borrowed directly from Neanderthals. Those ancient sequences once gave our ancestors protection against unfamiliar pathogens, bacteria, and viruses they had never faced before. Today, researchers suggest these same genes may still influence how our bodies respond to illness. Some variants appear linked to stronger immune responses, while others have been associated with increased vulnerability. In a way, their DNA still helps shape the battles inside your body whenever you get sick. And then, there's sleep. A study of circadian rhythm genes revealed that Neanderthal DNA influences how long you sleep and whether you're an early bird or a night owl. Life in Ice Age Europe meant long, dark winters and short, bright summers. Their internal clocks adapted. If you find yourself waking earlier than most or struggling with seasonal changes, those patterns may not be yours alone. They may be echoes from another species. Even your blood carries their mark. Variants tied to blood clotting, fast and strong, appear in Neanderthal DNA. This may have once saved lives after injuries on the hunt. But in the modern world, those same traits increase risk of dangerous clots, heart attacks, or strokes. Survival in the Ice Age became vulnerability in the age of medicine. And yet, in a strange way, this burden is also a connection. Because when you trace these genes back, you aren't just finding risks or quirks. You are finding moments of contact, moments when two different kinds of humans stood together on the same frozen earth. This is why scientists call our DNA a record of ancient encounters. Every fragment tells a story, not only of survival, but of blending. And every time you look in the mirror, small details of your body carry that record forward. Think about it. The way your skin burns in the sun, the way you wake with the seasons, the way your blood heals a wound. These are not accidents. They are echoes. Whispers passed down from Neanderthal lives lived tens of thousands of years ago. So, the next time someone says Neanderthals are gone, remember your blood, your skin, your sleep, your defenses. They left marks that never faded. They are not just bones in a museum. They are here. They are with you. They are you.